Hello and welcome to the Health and Wellness Podcast Series brought to you by Sanford Health. I'm your host today, Simon Floss with Sanford Health News. This series covers a number of topics to lead to a happy and healthy you. Our conversation today is on preventing orthopedic injuries. Our guest today, an expert, is Dr. Drew Glogoza, a sports medicine physician in Fargo, North Dakota. Thanks for being here today. Hey, thanks for having me on. Happy to be here. We have a, this is a, this is a really good topic. I know a lot of times when people think of like orthopedic injuries and preventing orthopedic injuries, you know, they would maybe think that's more um, fitting for older people, but uh, this happens to a lot of people. And um, I myself am one of them actually since uh, October, I've been dealing with uh, two herniated discs, two bulging discs and degenerative disc disease in my back. So um, things are a little slow moving for me right now. Um, and I think this is a topic that's going to help a lot of people. Um, so first of all, we're going to just talk about, uh, exercising and things like that. How important is it to warm up before exercising doctor? I think it's actually very important. You know, um, it really helps you get ready for whatever exercise you're going to do. Um, there might not be a lot of physiologic things that happen if you look at the research from it, but it really prepares your body both mentally and physically to just do whatever you plan to do, whether it's a workout or run, play a sport, something like that. It does help reduce the, the chance of injury as well by doing those things. And, and I think that that's really where the value of that is. And, and doctor, real quick here, what is sort of your like day to day life look like in your position? What do you, uh, what happens when you clock in and what happens when you clock out? You know, you know, we start here with clinic, um, start at eight. It's a, uh, mostly just like non-operative orthopedics kind of thing. So lots of arthritis, joint injuries, um, knee sprains, ankle sprains, stuff like that, that we'll, we'll see kind of all day. And then, Um, when I check out of the clinic, I go to the training rooms, uh, several days of the week at the colleges here in Fargo. So at NDSU, Concordia and MSUM, um, and take care of, uh, the athletic injuries that happen there. That's gotta be really cool to see some of the, you know, best athletes in the Midwest. And I mean, really, uh, the United States, uh, and, and work with them directly. Absolutely. It's, it's fun, you know, working with an athletic population is great. Uh, I'm fortunate to see a lot of people who are, Um, motivated to get better and want to get better. And I'm happy to be a part of their process and their recovery. And uh, speaking of process, we're talking about obviously warming up before exercising. What might be a good example of an active warm up? So there's kinds of, there's like three different ways that we talk about like warming up. So really the best type of warm up is one that's going to be dynamic. And when we talk about dynamic, I'm talking you see, if you watch any of the sporting events on TV, you'll see basically they're like exaggerated movements. Um, um, and it really helps with all sports and exercise, and it's going to be the best way to prevent injury. Now, the other two types of stretches that people will do um, when they're warming up are called ballistic. That's kind of where you bounce. Um, if you see people, you imagine like trying to stretch your hamstrings and people are bouncing, trying to touch their toes. Um, that's going to be ballistic. Now, there's some association with actually injuring yourself doing that. So that's one type of exercise that we don't generally recommend that you do for, for a warm up. And then you have your static, which is where you just like stretch and hold. Um, so a very common type of thing really enhances your flexibility. It's not very long lasting for the flexibility, um, but um doesn't quite help as good as the dynamic warm up, which is really what we want to do. You know, just for some examples of a of a dynamic warm up, like if there's like specific moves, if you will, um, what would maybe be some examples of that? Uh, like maybe a lunge with a twist, but obviously don't twist too hard. You know. <laughs> so I'm, I was a soccer player, oh, cool. um, so we did a lot of stuff where you know you'd be kind of exaggerating a kick, so you'd do a couple steps and then you'd swing your leg like you're going to kick, and then you'd switch and then kick your other leg. Um, you know, a lot of people will see, uh, we talk about it kind of like open the gate. So you're war- warming your hips up where you kind of do a high knee and then you externally rotate your hip to kind of open the gates a little bit to kind of get your hips moving. Uh, and, uh, as Shakira said, the hips don't lie. It's very important to, uh, to yeah, open right. those up and, uh, and, you know, prevent a lot of injuries that way. Uh, and you, I mean, you already alluded to it, but it is possible to, to overdo a warm up. Is that correct? Yeah, a little bit. You know, you don't want to do too much. Um, you know, it's it's kind of one of those things, you know, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing sometimes. So um, really, it's just about to kind of get things going a little bit, get yourself prepared and ready so that you're not just going from cold. 
um, to really try to make sure that we're not getting injured. Sure. Um, and uh, should a warm up and a cool down almost look the same or similar? Yeah, similar. Um, I think that a lot of times you'll see more dynamic stuff in the warm up. Um, kind of, as I told you that is probably the best way that we're going to prevent injury. And then you're going to see a little bit more of that static kind of things that you're going to do where you're just holding um, for, for a certain amount of time. You know, usually it's 10 or 30 seconds. Usually we don't recommend going past 60 seconds usually, but you're going to hold that kind of gives you some back that flexibility that you have. You might feel a little bit stiff after your workout or, or playing the sport or something like that. So um, it'll kind of help help you feel a little bit better when you're done. So uh, switching gears a little bit here, what are the best types of shoes that one could wear or does it kind of depend on whatever the activity someone is doing? This is this is a, a really interesting question and there's lots of you know research and data that's going into this. Obviously there's lots of money from shoe companies and things like that. Um, I don't have any disclosures. I don't have any relationships with any shoe companies, but really if you look at the the, the data on it, the data suggests that if the shoe is comfortable, that's going to be the best shoe for you to wear um, while you're doing exercise. So that's really what you want to look for. So if a shoe is not comfortable, that's probably not going to be a good shoe for you. Um, there's, there's really, if we're talking about running, there's kind of three different ways people run. People run on their toes. They run on the kind of their midfoot or, or they run on their heels where they heel strike first. And um, there's lots of different shoes and they market it to kind of these different um, styles of running, but really the evidence hasn't really shown much of a difference for the different shoes or styles. Sure. Um, I know that, you know, is there like, I've heard things like, you know, if you're going to like squat, deadlift, hit legs, um, you know, it's, you read a million things on the internet, but like they say that it's like, oh, you should use a flat shoe to keep your weight on your heels. Uh, is there any merit to that? Or is that just kind of a, you know, um, someone said it and it's like, oh, I guess I could look cool at the gym wearing Converse, you know? Yeah, I don't, you know, I don't think of that typically um, for it. Now, I'm, you're probably not looking as much for like comfort like you are running kind of a wise, but you probably want to do make sure that it, it does have some support to it. You know, a lot of the shoes are, if you try to squish them a little bit when you're in the store, you can kind of see what their heel is going to look like when you're if you're putting a lot of pressure on a different part of the shoe. So you might look for something that maybe has a little bit more support. A lot of that's actually going to come down to your form and probably not a whole lot to actually your shoes. Mm. Um, if you're, if you're, if you're looking for something like that. So are, uh, are there a few just like off the top of your head, like um, name brand shoes that you just in, in your world have heard good things about? Um, you know, especially for, running is, is really where people this is i mean this is really where people talk about shoes um you know a lot of people like the on clouds um wearing them all the time um i don't know that i see as, as many people run in them but you know for running you're talking about people are in ho hokas um Sauconies, um basics things like that so and again, I, I really think it's important to try to find one that fits the way you like um you know i've tried out a couple different pairs there's some pretty cushiony shoes out there that maybe feel great to take off some of that pounding from the running when you're out with the ground but you know for me personally for being a soccer player i like lighter shoes my soccer cleats are always very light so i'm just used to running in something in light it's light so i've, I've kind of i've migrated towards a lighter shoe when i when i exercise uh can you stress the importance of progression and easing into something or not overdoing it yeah, so that's going to be, it's really important um, to kind of get used to, to exercising again. You know, if it's been a couple months since you did something, or maybe it's been a couple years and you're trying to get back into it, you're not going to want to just jump back into it like you did when you were in high school, because you're just not going to be able to to do that at the same level. Um, so you have to modify your expectations and kind of ease into it. You know, um, you don't want to the goal of exercise isn't really to necessarily cause yourself pain. You know, a lot of times people feel sore and things like that after they've, they've done a workout or something like that. And they'll say, yeah, I can tell I worked out because you're, you're feeling a little bit, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a part of it. You don't have to push yourself to that point. And that's where mm -hmm. I think kind of working into it can be a really nice thing where you start very simple and easy and just get yourself going a little bit and then slowly progress yourself. Plus, everybody's busy these days, and it's not always that enjoyable to be really sore at work and 
if you can get yourself active and not really struggle with that pain and, and things like that, where you're doing your daily stuff, it can be, is really nice. And uh, personally, th this is something that I have had to learn, uh, the hard way. So I, um, you know, with my back, I've, I've actually had uh, a couple epi uh, epidural injections, excuse me. And after the first one, uh, the problem with epidural injections is that they work. And so I was like, oh, baby, I'm back. And I immediately jumped back into things that I was doing. And, um, you know, a few weeks later, I was in worse, uh, worse shape, excuse me, than, than I was uh, beforehand. So um, definitely something to stress and a little bit goes a long way, you know. Absolutely. Yeah, we do it when we, we do a lot of injections up here in Fargo. So we, we caution people about that too, just knowing that you're going to feel good and try to not overdo it. And um, the, so let's see, um, where was I at? Is it good to work out with uh, an accountability partner, whether it be like a trainer or friend to kind of, um, you know, keep you at the reins if you're injured or just make sure you're doing things correctly if you're just trying to exercise more? I think it's very helpful. Um, that might be my personal bias a little bit. Um, I'm a team sport athlete, so I kind of like that team thing. You know, you'll kind of, if you look at some of the, the sports research and things like that, you'll find that there's individual sport and then there's the team sports and people kind of migrate to the way that they kind of like to be. So for me personally, I like to have a, have a workout buddy or somebody to, to kind of hold you accountable, do the workouts with you, make sure that you're staying on top of it. I talk about this a lot with patients when I'm talking about physical therapy, actually. Some people are motivated to do it on their own. Others, other times you just need somebody there to kind of help you through it, make sure you're doing it right, keep you accountable and, and, and really help you on your way. So what are some benefits of cross training or weight bearing exercises specifically? So it, it really helps make sure that everything is strong. You know, a lot of times people kind of get focused in on one area, like I'm just going to lift weights or, or I'm just going to run because I just want to get in shape or something like that. And really, there's a lot of benefit and they both help each other. You know, weights and cross training really helps running and, and running maybe not quite as much. And it's, gonna, it's not going to make you throw a lot of weight around in the weight room, but um, it is going to help you um, with some of your stamina and endurance. But really, the weights do help running a lot. And, you know, a lot of people are doing a lot of running. Um, so it is very important to do that. And it, it really just helps kind of condition the whole body. And I want to circle back on that for a second, because I've personally experienced, um, you know, if I uh, place a little bit of an emphasis on lifting more than running, when I, I found that when I did start running again, I was slower than I was before. Um, is that something that's like common for people to experience? Or how could one... Um, you know, combat that, I guess. So you're saying you were slower after you started doing weightlifting? Yes. Yeah. And, and that certainly might be, uh, you know, if there's a little bit more muscle, then of course you're just weighing a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So kind of, so what the basics of what weightlifting or, or strength training is going to do if you're, you're a runner is it's going to increase your strength. Of course, that's, that's what you're doing, but it's also going to increase your explosiveness. Um, so that is really how it can help your running is it's going to make you stronger. So then your muscles are going to work better and you're going to be able to, to go a little bit longer, but it's also going to help you be a little bit faster. So if you're trying to get faster, if you, you have a goal in mind for a race or you just have a time in mind just for whatever you want, it's going to help with those things. You know, if you're just strictly running, it's just really just endurance is all that it is. It doesn't help your muscles a lot. So I, I would say that's probably a, maybe a little bit of an atypical experience because usually it should help. It really should. And sure. they usually do work good together. Well, maybe I need to uh, make a couple uh, trips up to Fargo and work with you and you can help me get back to uh, <laughs> to my, you know, 730 mile running days. But uh, anyway, I'm digressing. Um, can you stress the importance of uh, good form? Yeah, this is where it's going to be really key. And it's, uh, this can be hard for, for, for everyone to, to work on, but this is probably where a lot of injuries are even going to come from. So you really got to have the right form, you know, every, every workplace is always telling you to do all the work stuff, right? Lift the right way, stand the right way, all those things. So it is, it's important enough that it's kind of bled into the workplace. We know that it's definitely going to be important, especially if you're, if you're really shooting to try to lift some serious weights, if you're not using the right form, you're definitely going to injure yourself. 
Yeah, that makes sense. Um, can it be dangerous to lift weights? It could be if you have some underlying health stuff. You know, you hear a lot of stuff about check with your regular doctor before you do an exercise. And, and um, you know, once you start to get into maybe in middle age, that that can be a legitimate thing. You don't want to cause yourself more problems from exercise when you're trying to get healthy. Now, that maybe is a little bit counterintuitive. You hear us all talk about how important it is to exercise. But sometimes you got to make sure that you're doing the right kind of exercise and the right amount of exercise so that it's safe. I'm just curious, do, in, in your world, do you see more, and maybe it just depends on the body, but do you see more injuries from weightlifting or running and things like that? Um, I feel like I see a lot more from running. You know, you see a lot more just like really? overuse. Um, I, yeah. I don't think that at least, you know, it's, I guess... The, the people that would come in who are hurting themselves um, with the weightlifting are probably going to be the, the athletes that are doing CrossFit. Now, that's a little bit no. of – it's like a combination of what they're doing. You know, they're doing, like, max reps, like, as hard as they can go a lot, and it's just a really hard thing on their bodies. Um, but not necessarily, like, in the weight room, benching 400 pounds, kind of hurting yourself kind of a thing. I don't see a lot of that. Usually those people have got to the point that they are because they're – probably pretty good at lifting weights and they've got good form and, and, and they're in a really good at taking care of their body. Now, some of the other stuff, the running and the CrossFit is where you get a lot of people who are your weekend warriors or your people who are just trying to be healthy kind of a thing, trying to get back to being healthy, that kind of stuff. And, and that's where we have bad form, do maybe not the best exercises. We're not following the best running program, things like that. And that's where we start to get ourselves into trouble. Yeah, for sure. Um, so what are some measures that um, people could take to speed up recovery for orthopedic specific pain? Lots of different stuff that people will try. You know, obviously there's the, the yeah. ice and heat out there. Um, you know, I think of, you know, if you're going to break it down, heat, I generally think of for stiffness. So if you're feeling stiff after after a workout or before a workout or something like that, I'm probably going to use a little bit of heat to try to warm it up. You know, it's really a superficial treatment. It's going to increase some blood flow, um, really kind of give you some of that flexibility back. If you're feeling stiff, maybe help with a little bit of pain too. Cold's kind of the opposite, more so for pain. I don't, I mean, I think that's really what I would use um, cold things for. It's going to decrease blood flow. So probably not the best thing to do before a, a workout because you, you want your muscles to be um, adequately getting everything that they need. Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, a thought that, People, um, the cryotherapies are kind of a, a, a big thing, you know, whole body or certain limbs or, or stuff like that is kind of a mainstream kind yeah. of idea right now. Really the concept behind that when you do it after the workout is that it's going to vasoconstrict. So it's going to constrict everything going to your body. So it's going to just kind of shut everything off to your muscles and things like that. And then after you warm back up, everything's going to kind of open back up. And the thought is, is it's going to kind of wash away a lot of that extra stuff in there that is going to make your muscles feel sore. And I think that that's what people like about those cold tub immersions and things like that, that are pretty popular right now. Yeah. I, um, I've sort of adopted a little bit, just taking cold showers. And, uh, I tell my fiance that, and she's like, you are an insane person. <laughs> um, <laughs> so well, there's a lot of insane people out there with you then I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's lots of us. Um, so, and, uh, you know, this, this industry that we're going to, uh, tap into is, is huge. Uh, supplements. Are there any supplements that can prevent orthopedic injuries? You know, when you're coming, when you're talking about prevention, it's, Probably not if you're like actually going by what research is showing. Now, there's lots of research and there's kind of a lot of stuff that just kind of maybe works, maybe doesn't work. And, and that's sometimes what research shows. So, um, you know, things that you can really do, I'm probably going to tell you, you got to you got to alternate between high intensity and low intensity activity just generally. Now, that's not a supplement, but if you're alternating, that's hopefully going to help you recover some. You know, if we're talking about things that you can do, protein supplement is is actually a pretty good idea you know when i was in high school and and, and a college athlete that was kind of like not quite that big of an idea yet that was more like the you're built trying to build a lot of muscle if you're taking protein and that's really not true being an athlete and being an athletic person requires more protein your body just needs to needs that to recover so i think that that can be a really good way to help your body out whether it's adding it in your diet 
um, with the, the meats and things that you eat, or if you want to use whey protein for a protein um, shake to recover, you know, it really helps with your muscles um, synthesis. It's really good post-exercise. Um, so it's really going to help you just get all that recovery. Creatine is a pretty popular thing. Um, more so for going to be the help with that like short duration, high intensity kind of thing. So definitely if you're working on trying to improve your weight room performance, you're going to want to add some creatine in. But then there's other things like vitamin D or vitamin C. And, you know, a lot of people are taking a lot of these supplements. You know, vitamin D is going to help with your bone health. So if if you're an endurance runner or something like that and you can get in trouble with some bone health issues, might not be a bad idea to try to help with that and make sure that you're keeping yourself recovered. Vitamin C is going to help you retain iron. Um, so sometimes our endurance athletes get into trouble with anemia and low blood counts and stuff like that. So that might help things like that. There's also some thought that maybe it just helps you recover in general. You know, vitamin C sometimes is kind of this like wonder vitamin um, that a lot of people try to use for a lot of stuff. So, but. And uh, it's, uh, the, um, man, that's, that's great information to hear. Cause I mean, I've heard like, things like amino acids, magnesium, you know, all these things. And so it's, it's nice to hear like stuff that can help from a, an expert and a trusted source such as yourself. So actually just, just one more question here before I let you get on your way. Um, it's well documented that our pros uh, like yourself have worked with some of the greatest athletes. What makes care so special at Sanford or why should someone want to work with us? I think we just have a really great team here is, is probably what it comes down to. So athletes are used to working with a team. And then when you get to, you have an unfortunate bump in your road or your path and you, you need to interact with us, you're, you're getting um, the best team that we have. Um, physical therapists, non-operative orthopedics, You have we have surgeons, we have everybody. Everybody communicates really well and, and works really well. And we understand the goals of what, what the athlete is, is trying to achieve or, um, what they want to achieve. And, and we make sure that we work together to try to achieve it. Awesome. Well, doctor, thanks again so much for your time and expertise here today. No problem. Thanks for having me on. This episode is part of the health and wellness series by Sanford health for additional podcast series by Sanford health. Find us on Apple, Spotify, and news.sanfordhealth.org. Thanks again for listening. I'm Simon Floss.